As far as organized and family-run cartels go, the Sinaloa Cartel, also known as the Guzman Leora Organization, the Pacific Cartel, the Federation, and the Blood Alliance, is considered by both the Mexican and US government to be the largest and most powerful drug cartel of all time. The International Drug Trafficking, Money Laundering, and Organized Crime Syndicate was founded in 1989 after Mexican smugglers Hector Palma Salazar, Juan Jose Esparagosa Moreno, and Joaquin Guzman Loera splintered from the Guadalajara cartel. It wasn't until Hector, who controlled the affairs of the Sinaloa cartel, was arrested in 1995 that Joaquin Arquivaldo El Chapo Guzman Loera became the figure of the organization. And contrary to popular belief, the actual leader of the organization at that time was in fact not El Chapo, it was Ismael El Mayo Zambada. To continue learning the story of Ovidio Guzman Lopez, then keep watching until the end of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Now without further ado, let's get started. El Chapo, once considered Mexico's most wanted drug lord and the world's most wanted criminal, was captured and extradited. His position was filled by his son, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, commonly known as El Raton or El Nuevo Raton, which translates to the mouse or the new mouse. Although it is speculated that he has led the cartel along with his brothers Ivan Arquivaldo Guzman and Jesus Alfredo Guzman, in addition to their father's close associate, Ismael El Mayo Zambada. Ovidio Guzman Lopez is one of four sons born from the second marriage to the infamous drug lord. He was born on the 29th of March, 1990 in Mexico. He is the youngest of the Los Chapitos brothers composed of him and his two half-brothers, Ivan Arquivaldo Guzman Salazar and Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar. Ovidio and his siblings grew up in Culiacan, the capital of Sinaloa State. The hilly region where they were raised is reputed to be the cradle of drug trafficking, notable for being home to drug lords and drug kingpins. Despite Ovidio Guzman Lopez's attempts at keeping a low radar than the rest of Los Chapitos, on May 8, 2012, Ovidio Guzman was sanctioned according to the U.S. Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act. Under the Kingpin Act, U.S. firms, banks, and individuals were prevented from doing business with them, and any assets the men may have under the U.S. jurisdiction are frozen. Over 1,000 companies and individuals linked to the 94 drug kingpins have been placed on the blacklist since 2000. Penalties for violating the act range from 30 years in prison and fines up to $10 million. In 2015, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was arrested in Mexico for money laundering charges but subsequently released. The apple didn't fall too far from the tree, as Griselda Lopez Perez, Ovidio's mother, is also wanted in the US for drug trafficking and links to organized crime in the Sinaloa cartel, including assisting her husband in evading justice in previous times. Griselda's assets under US jurisdiction are also frozen, and no businesses can be conducted with her. And as much as I'd love for the time we have to only focus on Ovidio, we can't really talk about him without having to at least address his father, so let's take a few steps backwards. Joaquin, El Chapo Arquivaldo Guzman Leora, was a very ambitious man. He began his career at the age of 15, going to work with the Guadalajara cartel, the then leading crime syndicate in the 1980s. El Chapo was very proficient in his dealings on behalf of the organization. He was considered to approach businesses pretty ruthlessly and would simply execute a smuggler who wasn't timely with his drug shipment. El Chapo gained so much favor with the Guadalajara cartel that they introduced him to Felix Gallardo, one of the major drug lords in Mexico at the time. Guzman rose from being Gallardo's chauffeur, to being his logistics manager, to working for him directly. Guzman eventually gained so much ground within the cartel that he took over more drug trafficking operations. So with all that said, there's no wonder he stepped up as the leader of the International Crime Syndicate. During his incarceration in 1989, Felix Gallardo called for a summit in Alcapulco, Guerrero to decide the future of Mexico's drug trafficking. They unanimously agreed to divide the territories previously owned by the Guadalajara cartel. Joaquin, El Chapo Arquivaldo Guzman Loera, and his partner Ismael El Mayo Zambada Palma were apportioned the Sinaloa and the Pacific Coast territories, respectively. And this was how the Sinaloa cartel was birthed. In 2019, El Chapo Guzman was found guilty of a number of criminal charges related to his leadership of the Sinaloa cartel and is currently serving a life sentence at ADX Florence. 
The Sinaloa cartel operates in the Golden Triangle, which are the states of Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua. The region is a major producer of Mexican opium and marijuana. Despite trafficking various types of illicit substances, the cartel's operations seem to mostly favor the trade of cocaine and heroin. According to the U.S. Attorney General, the Sinaloa cartel was responsible for importing and distributing nearly 200 tons of cocaine and large amounts of heroin into the U.S. between 1990 and 2008. By the early 21st century, the cartel had operations in more than 50 countries, but particularly dominant in the United States. According to the National Drug Intelligence Center, within the U.S., the Sinaloa cartel is primarily involved in the distribution of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, cannabis, and MDMA. It is also the majority supplier of illicit fentanyl to North America. As of 2017, the Sinaloa cartel is the most active drug cartel involved in smuggling illicit drugs into the United States and trafficking them throughout the country. It is apt when said that children follow in the footsteps of their parents, as is the case with Ovidio Guzman Lopez and his two half-brothers Ivan Arquivaldo Guzman Salazar and Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar. These two started trafficking illegal drugs from their teens. In February 2019, following an arrest warrant issued by federal judge Arthur G. Wyatt in Washington, D.C. for their arrest and extradition, Ovidio El Raton Guzman and his immediate brother Joaquin El Guero Guzman Lopez were charged with conspiracy to import and distribute meth, marijuana, and cocaine by the United States. Ovidio Guzman Lopez was then briefly arrested in Sinaloa by members of the Mexican National Guard in October 2019. It set off several gun battles in the city like never before. The armed forces managed to detain him, but they were forced to let him go because they were severely outmatched by 700 heavily armed cartel members, and also after 8 of their members were taken by force and held hostage. The soldiers relented and aborted the arrest hours later. It would also be apt to say that escape seems to be a genetic trait shared with the Guzmans. El Chapo is notorious for eluding apprehension by the government and even escaping prison twice before finally getting caught a third time. Turns out the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. The then Mexican president Andres Manuel López Obrador made the decision to return Guzman because the situation became very difficult and the citizens were at risk. The capture of a criminal cannot be worth more than the lives of people. That shooting retort was commandeered by Ivan, Ovidio's half-brother, and Eduardo N., the Mexican officer who arrested Ovidio, was executed the following month in broad daylight. In May 2020, Santiago Nieto, head of Mexico's financial intelligence unit, reaffirmed that the government of Mexico froze millionaire accounts for Ovidio Guzman. In that same year, cartel expert and former U.S. Federal Marshal Robert Almonte claimed that there were credible reports that Nemesio El Mencho Oseguera Cervantes, leader of the rival Jalisco New Generation Cartel, recruited hired guns known as Los 28 to track down and kill Ovidio and his two brothers, Ivan Arquivaldo and Jesus Alfredo. The CJNG is a strong rival of the Sinaloa Cartel, known for its extreme use of violence and public relations campaigns. The battles between the two groups occur in the regions of Baja California and Zacatecas, over territory for drug trafficking routes. As of 2020, the Sinaloa Cartel remains Mexico's most dominant drug cartel and one of the world's most powerful drug syndicates in the early 21st century. However, it has been alleged that internal conflicts for the cartel's leadership had recently broken out between the Guzman and Zambada factions of the organization. The feud between the two sides of the cartel is said to have been either initiated or exacerbated by the Battle of Culiacan incident, where El Mayo Zambada withheld his men from intervening in the conflict between the cartel and the Mexican National Guard after the capture of Ovidio Guzman. On June 24th, 2020, it is revealed that the Los Chapitos brothers now have the most influence over the Sinaloa cartel, as Zambada, their father's close associate, was now sick with diabetes. Don't forget to like this video and share it, and just so you don't miss out on new videos, hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. Until next time!